Who do you suppose wrote that one? Jimmy Durante? Wrong. It was written by Jimmy Noon. Next is Delta Bound. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so what? <laughs> you so, know, that's one of the first questions I get when I'd come home and my dad was sitting at the supper table. So, how was school? And the, the fact of the matter is, I would rather not have talked about it at all. Yeah. But, you know, you have to report to the head of the household. That's right. That's yeah. Right. So you got you to you follow the so with something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got to do. Speaking of so, I yes. got to ask. So, so, so. This week, I've been captivated. There's a guy named David W. Nevin, and he amassed this lifetime record collection of jazz, okay? It, it's, I noticed that. You had brought that up there on the, uh, the screen, David Niven. Yeah, and what he did is he spent his lifetime amassing this record collection of vinyl, okay? Not, not the actor. No, not the one, not the British actor. This is a guy that was a music teacher. Okay. And what he did is he masked all these tapes, and he did that kind of basement thing that we tend to do. He did all the intros to all these tapes for his kids. Yeah. And he has, it's on archive.org, it's public domain, it's 1921 to 1991, and it is 13,000, wait, 1,378 wave files, 1,000 hours, 650 tapes, and 637 gigs of music and as you can see here he wrote all of it out it's all detailed i've listened to it i'm totally enamored with it and the history that he weaves into it yeah. amazing 70 years of this yes and he gets uh, what we now call three quarter of a of a terabyte yes of this stuff <laughs> just <laughs> free wow. you can go crazy with this and i've been yeah. getting some of this so basically what i'm going to do in honor of david i'm going to come up with at least one hour of programming for him yeah and it's going to include his voice introing people but he has these fascinating stories i mean he must have just did nothing but study jazz this guy yeah you know so the, the uh, guy that kind of really lives and breathes it yeah, that's. The, I mean, and this is the kind of guy that this is one of the most pure, unadulterated levels of love that you can have. Right. You know, he all he did was leave this for his kids. If he knew that this was out and that this hid the internet as as big as it has, yeah, he would be thrilled. <laughs> Anything else going on out there? Did that, not, not that I'm aware of, except uh, <laughs> you now we mentioned uh, Jill Barber. Yes. Give me. A kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will thrive upon that. Well, I think I said, I may have said Joan or J Jane. So I, at, at this point in, yeah, at this point in things, I think maybe just, I'm um, just correcting myself. Well, yeah, we, we'll just, we'll just call her Jill. Okay. I'm sure she would appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If we got the name right, I think she would be happy. The one thing I did want to say yeah. on, on another note here, yeah. I had a unbelievably great interview with Logan Richardson who used to be in Kansas City. Yeah. He was in Paris and we discussed a great many things. A lot of revelatory things came out. But one thing I will tell you is that he said the floodgates on the Kansas City jazz scene are getting ready to burst. Yeah, and I have a feeling that you, sir, are a part of that. Well, I, I hope I'm in in whatever way I'm 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 helping these guys out. But yeah. he said that the affordability of New York is getting so bad that people want to move to an affordable place like Kansas City. Yeah. And it's all these places that are springing up around the crossroads and all these places and things that are going on. Green Lady, he said he may even come back and open something up. So, oh, wow. Anyway, I, that, that was a very promising thing. And he had some great things to say. This will be released as an interview later on. But uh, Logan was one of the best interviews that I've had in a long... And I've, I, I can't rank them, but... It, it, it was really refreshing to hear that much about Kansas City from yeah. someone that moved on to New York and now is in Paris. So it was uh, it was good times. Yep. I was reading this uh, article here the other day on, in a magazine, and I happened to notice uh, it was an older magazine. You'd given it to me, but one of the uh, things that was said. Uh, as kind of an open blurb line in one of the articles, is jazz dying? Yeah. 
Stop. You know, that thing, <laughs> I used to think I was going to talk about that when we yeah. started this show in 2011, and then I, 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 I automatically got rid of it because it's trite, it's not true, and it's brought up by journalists that already make these jazz musicians not happy to begin with. Yeah. It's just not true. I mean, you can't, you can't go up, like Lenny Kravitz saying, he's saying rock and roll is dead. He was talking about certain parts of what we do in studios and the way we've manufactured it has changed the landscape. But none of this is dead. Yeah, for some of us, you know, that are having a little trouble getting older, the music may, the, the music hasn't died, you know. Right. But uh, a, a time has certainly passed, but not for making great music. Yeah, like classical music. Is classical music dead? No, it's just moved on to people like Philip Glass and Yo-Yo Ma and all these other yeah. modern innovators. But the reality of jazz is it is thriving. And in Kansas City, we're in a renaissance. That's what Logan was talking about. This yeah. scene is very healthy, and it's just adding. These guys, all of them, like Logan, he said he wanted out of Kansas City. You talk to someone like Herman Mahari and these other guys, yeah. they want to stay. You know, this is a great, healthy environment to make music. Yeah, maybe we just all kind of gang up here. We can get ourselves a uh, transmitter and a jazz station in what is a jazz town. Yeah. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I would love that. That, that sounds like a good idea. Anybody got a tower with a 50,000-watt <laughs> transmitter they could loan us for a little while? If any of you do win the lottery out there and you want to do something altruistic, Go ahead, and we'll give you a P.O. box. We'll set it up after the show, and you can just send it our way. Yeah, and it Clinton fan. Yeah. And you're a Clinton fan. This is a non-political hour here. We do not talk about politics. Clinton. No, we talk about... And Duane Trump. Right. Clinton and Duane Trump. We, well, let's talk about jazz. This is a uh, future talk show host here. Yeah, that's right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I, I might they might be final for now, but not for <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> what time period are you talking about? Here? So, so we should say that this is all a work in progress. <laughs> this is what we say in show business until next time. Until next time, click click. <laughs> Enjoy the music, Enjoy my the friends. Music, my friends. For this recording session, this group called themselves the Jungle Kings. <laughs> Neon Jazz.